when we say Indo-European languages, what does it really mean? In Bharat, we have our languages, which are, uh, you could say, upper forms of Mother Sanskrit, corrupted forms of Mother Sanskrit. And we understand uh, much of our language, like people from the South will get an idea of Punjabi, people from Bengal will understand Marathi. Gujarati, Hindi, Marathi, Bengali, almost the same here and there with some differences. Yep, we do understand that. Yep. So what's the deal with the European languages? Because we don't understand a word of them. Even though we say that these are part of the Indo-European language family, we use the term Indo-European languages. I am sure people of Europe will understand some multiple languages here and there. So is this Euro Indo-European language family a complete figment of imagination? Is it fiction or is it really a thing? Very good question you ask. So in India, we understand each other's languages. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, look, even if someone speaks Tamil, or if someone speaks Malayali or someone speaks Kannada, they will still be able to understand a lot of words from the northern languages and, and so on. So because of because of the way the languages are and because of our, because of thousands and tens and thousands of years of Indian history. And when it comes to the what's called the Aryan languages or Indo-Aryan languages, well, they are very mutually intelligible. If you speak uh, any, for example, Bengali, you will be able to understand much of what someone says in Hindi or Gujarati or Marathi or Punjabi or whatever and so on. So very mutually in, uh, intelligible with some changes, but you can understand what someone is saying. Similarly, in Europe, if someone speaks, let's say, Spanish, they'll be able to figure out what an Italian person is saying to some extent. Right, the Romance languages. If someone speaks, let's say German, they'll be able to understand what a Dutch person is speaking to some extent. Or an, uh, if someone speaks English, they may be able to figure out what a German person is saying because of certain words that are kind of common. But when it comes to Indian languages and European languages, I mean, you really can't understand each other's languages, right? And then there's the case, case of Persian. So if you pay attention to Persian, if someone speaks Persian slowly, you, you will even be able to understand some Persian because the Persian is way, way more similar, way closer to the Indian languages than to the Western languages, European languages. Now, so the question is, is what is this thing? Is this a truth? Is this a real thing, the Indo-European language family, or is it just fiction? So it's, it's true. These, these languages are part of the same language family. And let me show you why. So let's see, okay? Um, Indo, Indo, European language, similar words, okay? Mother, father, sister, day, night, etc. I'm going to show you the similarities. Indo European voca vocabulary. Where do we go? Indo European, common words of Indo European language. Let's see this website. Okay, I have not seen it before. Do we have, okay, here we have it. Mother, father, okay? So Sanskrit. Mum means me. In Greek, it's eme. In Latin, it's me. In English, it's me. Tuam means you. It is Greek. In Greek, it's su. And tuam in Latin becomes tu. In English, it becomes thou, du, tve. Then tuam, similar. And then pitar. In Sanskrit, we say pitar. Pitru, pitar, right? That's father. In Greek, it becomes pater. In Latin, it becomes pater. In English, it becomes father, and so on. Mater in Sanskrit is mother, obviously, which becomes matter in Greek, matter in Latin, and mother in English. Brother in Sanskrit becomes frater in Latin, and brother in English. Swastar or swastri in Sanskrit becomes soror in Latin, and sister in English. Duhitar, which is daughter, becomes daughter in English, and thugatar in, in Greek. Ashwas becomes hippos and equus and yo and so much more. Janu means knee. It's the same word in French, janu, which is janu in Sanskrit. Uh, I mean, there's so many examples of this. You know, sapta is seven, which is hapta in, in Greek. It's also, it's, it's septem in Latin and seven in English. Ashta becomes octo, octo eight. Nava becomes novem or nine. Dasa becomes deka in Greek and decem in, uh, in Latin. Shatam becomes hecton, centum, hundred. Indo-European, Europe, Indo-Iranian words, it's even closer. Okay. Sanskrit and English, mother becomes mother, pitar becomes father, brother becomes brother. 
and so much more. So much more. There's, there's so many similarities. If you look slightly below the surface, if you do a surface level analysis, just on the basis, basis of how languages sound, you won't see any, any similarities. But if you do a deeper analysis, you'll see shocking similarities emerge all over the place. All over the place. Um, when it comes to the days of the week, okay, in 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 Sanskrit, we have what? Ravivar, Somwar, Mangalwar, Buddh, Guru, Shukra, Shani. Now, Ravivar, Ravi, who is Ravi? Ravi means the sun. Ravivar becomes Sunday. Yes? Okay, Somwar, Monday, right? Who, what is Som? Somwar, what is Som? Som means moon, which is Monday. In French, it's Lundi, Lune. Lune means moon. Once again, the same pattern. Uh, so Mangal, Mangal is Mars. In French, you have Mardi, which is Tuesday. And Tuesday in English is from Tyr, T Y R. It's a Nordic god. Then Wednesday, so Mangal, so Mangal, Bud, Bud. It's Mercury, right? In French, you say Mercredi, Mercury. Thursday is what? So Mangal, Bud, Guruvar, Guruvar, right? Guruvar is. Uh, it is, it is Jupiter. Guru is Jupiter. Jupiter. Who was Jupiter? Who was Jupiter? Well, it was Indra. Indra became Zeus. Zeus became Jupiter. Jupiter became Thor. Why is it called Thor's day? And so on. I can give you the whole thing. The similarities in language, culture are, are striking. They are unmistakable. But you need something beyond that goes deeper than surface level analysis. Then you will see the shocking patterns emerge everywhere. So it tells you that this was all part of one culture long, long ago, which originated somewhere. And the question is where? And the white supremacists will claim that it all originated in white Europe, which is utter nonsense. All right? Okay.